Hey, what's up, Yoon fan? It is I, Mark Yoon, and I'm bringing another hopefully exciting video today. So what I got for you today is our Community Day video. It's our Friday Community Day where we go over my favorite comments from throughout the week, or the most informed, or the nicest, just like the favorite comments that like I've seen, and just a way to get back to you guys. So the first one we're going to start with today is from my old versus new timeline differences Soul Calibur video. I believe this was... Monday's video, and the first commenter we have is Christian Gray, and he says, For me, I'm okay with this version of Nightmare wielding his sword with one hand, because this version of Nightmare is Siegfried with an unhealthy mind, and him being unstable with madness. Also, with regret from killing his father, and it's implied that he wielded with the sword with one hand in Soul Calibur 1 and 2 art. As Nightmare is main from Soul Calibur 2, I'm okay with this change. That's just what I'm trying to say. Yeah, uh, thanks. There's a lot of like interesting tidbits that have been coming around from the new timeline, and uh, a lot of little interesting takes on different characters. And it's good for you to spot like this that like he never wielded it before, except for in various art. So good on you for that. Thanks for the comment. Caliber seventy five, the gamer says, very well explained. I need to share this. Great video. No one covers Soul Caliber like you. Well, we can see why I chose this comment. <laughs> Thank you so much, Calibur75 the Gamer. I appreciate the compliment. Um, I don't really take them well without joking, but uh, I highly, highly appreciate it. Thank you. Solarfly95 says, When I first heard that Soul Calibur 6 was going to be a reboot, I was heavily against it. But after playing 6 and seeing all the things that have been fleshed out, as well as all the lore that was added, I can say with certainty that I prefer the new timeline. Also, let's face it, the old timeline didn't have much of a cohesive uh, story. I mean, yes, there was a story, but it mostly played second fiddle to the other aspects of the games. To its credit, Soul Calibur V tried to have a true uh, story to it, keyword being tried, but we all know how that went. My point is that the new timeline is just superior in very nearly every aspect, and I can't wait to see what the future entails. I definitely agree. Um, I was super against it being a reboot as well, because I generally hate reboots, because it just, like, I know some people argue against this, that, uh, it's a, it's like a restart or whatever, but the old timeline still exists. Sure, the old timeline still exists, but it's effectively throwing it out. Um, I always compare this to, like, I got, like, a really smart-ass comment the other day about, like, um, semantics with certain words and stuff like that. And, of course, they were wrong, but I didn't want to take, like, the time to actually justify it by, like, typing out a response. So, I'm going to respond here. Um, with a reboot, the intention is to erase the old timeline. It doesn't matter if it does it or not. That's what the intent is. They're saying that story's over and done with. Now it's time to focus on this story. Whether or not it's a new timeline or not doesn't matter. Whether or not that timeline still exists or is ongoing is fan canon and doesn't matter. Uh, if they choose to reboot so a certain something, even if people like that certain something, it's just gone. Like, this is a restarting of the franchise, so we're not supposed to be like... That's why I compare the two, like, so we see the differences, because it's not supposed to be like, oh, well, you know, Amy met Raphael younger in this one, that's not a big deal. It's like, it is a big deal, because, like, it affects the whole rest of the timeline and the whole rest of the story. Um, I'm not really annoyed as much as just frustrated from like constantly having to reiterate my position on this even if you don't agree with my position on it that's completely fine but this is just my position like it's reboots are for all intents and purposes erasing the old timeline you can still go back and play five sure i soul Calibur 3 is my favorite game i can go back and play it whenever i want but it doesn't mean like i have to be like oh wait this happened in this game therefore it's going to happen again in the new timeline it's not really what's going to happen but I can see why people get frustrated with that, especially people that did love the old one. And I'm right there with you. I use Dragon Ball as an example all the time, guys. Uh, I actually like Dragon Ball GT. A uh, little quick backstory, I started watching Dragon Ball in the early 80s uh, in Japanese without subs, VHS tapes. And uh, eventually started getting fan subs, and I love the series. I was already past like the Boo Saga when the Cell Saga first came to America for uh, syndication. So... I, w I was always a huge fan. I wanted more, though, so just watching, like, the WV version or the Oceans Group dub version wasn't enough for me. This is before Toonami, even. So, I know this is off-topic, but this just lends, lends to what my position is. So I was 
thirsting for more. I already seen all the movies. I already seen the series like I think like four or five times at that point. And Dragon Ball GT came out right after the Buu Saga ended in 1996. I watched GT. At first, I didn't really like it, but then I learned to appreciate certain aspects of it, what they were trying to do and accomplish. And after a long time, I actually grew to be one of those people that actually likes GT, especially because Super Saiyan 4 is my favorite form. Uh, I love Baby as a villain. There's just a lot to it, right? There's also aspects that I don't like, but that doesn't matter. Uh, when they made Super, my biggest concern was that they were going to erase GT. Now, we can talk about canon all day. The only canon in Dragon Ball is just, like, canon for everything else. It's what the original people say, and it's based on pretty much the first 95 volumes of the manga. So, as far as I'm concerned, everything after the Buu Saga, none of that's canon. We already know the movies aren't canon, but you know what I mean. So, I really don't care about canon. I frankly don't give a shit. I just, uh, I like GT. And then when Super came out, they're pretty much like, well, this doesn't erase GT because it happens before that time, but it basically does because within that time period you're trying to tell me that like after GT starts that they forgot about Super Saiyan Blue and they like forgot about this or that or whatever. Maybe it's all a dream, I don't know. But effectively rebooted it. I can go back and watch GT whenever I want. I have it on DVD. But it doesn't matter that I want it to be in the current canon um, as much as I like it. It's just not. And I know this is a bit of a rant, I'm sorry, <laughs> but we'll get back to the comments. But I just wanted to elaborate on my point with that, because a lot of people keep, I guess, hounding me about the timeline existing still. Like, I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, I'm saying that the intentions of the developers was to reboot and restart the franchise. Meaning that whether it exists or not, that we can fan cannon to let heads come home, until the cows come home, but right now, for all intents and purposes, that story is done and finished. Terrence Sprout says, Keep it up, G. You're the reason why I tune into your channel, Soul Calibur News, content, and now new gen consoles are coming out. Very soon, Tekken 7 getting a Season 4, Soul Calibur 6 uh, getting a Season 3, if, fingers crossed. Will Tekken and Soul Calibur 6 come to PS5 and Xbox Series X? Uh, not I don't think 6 will. I think Soul Calibur 7 will probably come out in 2022, 2023, but I don't think that they will have a version on the PS5. Your PlayStation 4 version can play on the PS5, so I think that's why they don't really care about doing that. Unless they come out with some kind of complete edition, but that's usually like a midway type of thing. Like Mortal Kombat tends to make complete editions, so does Street Fighter. Well, they make like arcade editions and then like whatever. But um, Soul Calibur tends to just like put the, se the seasons out there and that's it. Even though we have like very limited time with that because we only had DLC from I think Soul Calibur 5, so there's not really much precedent for that, so we'll see what happens. They may make a complete edition, who knows. James Shepard says, Great video, Mark. Only recently subscribed to you and your Soul Calibur 6 content. Also, Patroclus Reboot, which is what I asked you guys to say at the end of the video, because it was like super long, like 40 minutes, so thank you. Uh, also, my favorite five characters to play as in Soul Calibur 6 are Amy, Sungmina, Keelik, Siegfried, Cassandra, and honorable mentions including Nightmare, Maxi, uh, shang Gro, and Setsuka. And finally, I really hope that Huang sung Young comes back as he is one of my favorite characters to play as in the original Soul Blade and Soul Edge. Yeah, dude, like, I really hope he comes back too. I mean, every, all, for all intents and purposes, like, we, there's files in the game. Like, he, he has his head, I have saw in the game, his hair. Uh, I've seen his eight weapons, I've seen uh, a couple clothing pieces, so he's got data and resources in the game, so I'm, I'm like 99% sure he's the next character that's coming. Whether I'm still right about Yoon's song at the end of Season 3, I'm only going based on the data files and code that's in the game there, so I'm not sure yet, they can change that. But um, for all intents and purposes, Fong is coming back, which I'm super excited about. Solar for 95 says, I mentioned to Kitty Meows or Gaming once that we can never truly know what goes on behind the scenes. After seeing this, however, it's astonishing how much Project Soul has been through, and how much they were able to accomplish in spite of it all. Though this does not excuse every single issue in my opinion, I've got to say that I've gained a huge amount of respect for the company now. Great video, my dude. Uh, thanks, Solar Flare. Yeah, I wasn't, I'm not trying to say that anybody should, like, simp for the damn company or whatever, like... Mistakes happen. I just want people to be educated on like where those mistakes, where and who is to blame for what instances. Because um, people are just like falsely blaming, like Project Soul or falsely blaming like Bandai Namco or whatever for certain aspects that they weren't in control of. So I, I was just trying to make people aware. You can be mad at them all you want. Um, personally, like I don't find it useful. But uh, if you do, like 
that's on you, dude. I, I like, I'm fine with that. You can voice your opinion all you want. Virgil Riot 70 says, Thanks for all the information you provided here. I really, I already knew some of these things that you said, but for others, I was completely oblivious of it. So in other words, it's thanks to us, Soul Calibur, it's thanks to us that Soul Calibur is still alive and kicking, and it's thanks to our support that we got a season pass too. That makes me feel really happy since it means that it's our passion that keeps this series strong, showing that previously dead franchises can be revived if we keep giving hope and support. I really need to say Patroclus Reboot, even though I don't really want him back. Just to point that out, that I made it to the end of the video, I thought left. Yeah, dude, like, I only said that, like, I don't script these, so they just they just come off the top of my head, one take, and then I edit, that's it. Um, so, like, it would drive me crazy if I had to just, like, constantly write a script for every video, because I do them every day. But, um, I, Patroclus Reboot just came off the top of my head, because I was complaining about him. Uh, I hate Patroclus, too. <laughs> I like his fighting style, but I don't like him. I don't like him. Um, Michael Garcia says, I hope the new team would be just as good as the old team. This is in reference to Project Soul. This is talking about my rocky, my bumpy road of Soul Calibur, like mini doc. I hope we get more cutscenes in the Soul Calibur franchise. Next time, I would love to see our custom characters fighting alongside the characters from the game and stopping a new threat. And you can have a decision of what sword you're going to look for. For I remember there was a lot of cutscenes in Soul Calibur 3. If there's a Soul Calibur 7, I hope it's like that and they bring back Chronicles of the Sword because I miss that and I still play Soul Calibur 3 to this day. I hope they do something different with it. Also, we need a mixture of old um, and new. I can see that happening to this franchise. It needs to be a big staple. Again, I love Soul Calibur 6 and we need to blow the roof off with the next game. Well, like I said in my video, this game, Soul Calibur 6 is pretty much like their application. So, Soul Calibur 7, they're going to go all in. They're actually going to have like a, a budget this time, so... I'm quite excited about that. Daniel Ramsey says, first he has a time code for 2608, and he says, this is what I love most about your videos and the success of Soul Calibur 6. It's a fighting game that survived. Project Soul felt a huge blow that most of us fans felt during and after Soul Calibur 5. The release of Soul Calibur, Unbreakable Sword, Soul, Lost Swords, and the Pachinko Machine game felt like a death nail to the entire franchise. That's because it was a death nail, <laughs> for all intents and purposes. To the point where it mirrored the deaths of past games like Metal Gear, Silent Hill, Castlevania, and to an extent, Devil May Cry. Oh man, don't get me started on Devil May Cry. That was one of my favorite franchises and whatever. Five's okay. I still haven't beaten it yet, but whatever. Uh, but even... I sound like... Okay, let's move on. Uh, but even worse was knowing that it was close to joining the long list of dead fighting games that people were passionate for. Like Bloody Roar, Darkstalkers, Virtual Fighter, not sure if it's dead. I'm pretty sure Virtual Fighter's dead. Like I'm, I'm, I've never really been a big fan of Virtual Fighter to be honest, and I don't really care if I own them because I can play them in Yakuza. So whatever. Uh, Battle Arena Toshinden, great freaking game. Uh, good anime as well too. Primal Rage, awesome game. Last Blade, Star Gladiator, and many, many more. The fact that Soul Calibur Six is alive today speaks volumes about how passion can channel revival. If the that sounds like a Dragon Ball episode, passion channel revival. If the franchise ever closes out, let's hope that it does it with a bang instead of a whimper. I hope it doesn't close out. Like I'm like I want to keep this party going, man. Like I like Soul Calibur, especially their creative character system. They were one of the first fighting games to do it. Uh, Mortal Kombat Armageddon at that time came out with it as well, and I don't know why they put that away because their their creative character system was awesome. Um, yeah, there was limitations because of the PS2, but I don't know if you've ever played it, but it's a great character creator. They specifically put, like, anime ha hairstyles, like, 1 and 2 for Goku and Cloud, so you can, like, literally create, like, Goku and Cloud in the game. Um, yeah, but anyway, I just, <laughs> I really like to create a character in that. Malez24 says, it's been a rocky road, but really appreciate Okubo and Bandai Namco giving Soul Calibur a second chance. Uh, yeah, I do as well. Bandai Namco does deserve some credit for actually greenlighting it, because they didn't really have to, because it's not really a system seller, but I do appreciate both parties there. Calibur 75, the gamer says, Great video, wow. I learned stuff that I didn't know before. I never knew from 5 had that many issues. Uh, also, Patroclus Reboot. Yeah, dude, 5 was riddled with issues. Like, they even canceled DLC. I didn't even I didn't mention that in the video, but there were plans for, like, more DLC, and they just straight up canceled it because of the sales. And two months in, I think it was two months in, maybe it was four, a few months in, the director, like, quit and, like, just left um, Project Soul, too, so... And he was the one that greenlit all that whack stuff in the game. Anyway, uh, Ashton Bird says, Soul Calibur series has been through the rough times, it seems. It's interesting to see, learn this stuff, hopefully. Project Soul will rise up through the ashes. Will Soul Calibur 6, maybe Soul Calibur 7? As of who's at fault here, it would... I say it varies because everyone sees the situation differently. Money is always important to have in each project. Yeah, without money, you don't have a game, really. 
Jacoba says, I'll be honest, I was supposed to play the video in the background and play Warcraft, but in the end I turned WoW off and decided to watch it, uh, not just listen to the background, my video I guess. Anyway, thanks for confirming most of my theories when I spoke with friends prior to December 2017, why there will be no Soul Calibur 6. So many thanks for the vid, Mark. Thank you, Jack Quest. Thank you guys for keeping watching. Like, I wouldn't be making these videos if you guys actually didn't watch, so it's more of a thank you to you guys. Okay, and then we got Deathcall777 again. This document stuff is your best stuff, my dude. It's what I respect about your channel the most. Uh, well, thank you very much. Like, I work hard on it, and this document stuff, it takes forever, guys. Like, I don't, I'm, I do this for, like, hours a day. <laughs> it's a lot of research and stuff, so thank you for appreciating it. I appreciate it. Coolbird00 says, Dude, I really love your Soul Calibur content. I've always believed Soul Calibur is a wonderful game that had appeal to a wide array of different people. Thank you, and thank you for commenting. I agree. I think it's for everybody. There, I mean, at least there's something for everybody. Hera Cortez says, I think Wong will have the Nippon Blade, but not as his primary weapon. I can see the Blue Thunder revamp into a much common slimmer form of the Dao. Wong with the Dao Chinese Saber and Yun Song with the Dao Chinese Broadsword. For movesets, I think it will recreate these of his signature moves from the previous games. He'll be more focused into sword play and less kicks because Yun Song, on the contrary, focused on kicks and Taekwondo moves borrowed from Huarong from Tekken. Uh, I don't know if they're actually borrowed from Huarong, like Huarong just does Taekwondo, but uh, the Koreans in Soul Calibur actually don't use Taekwondo. They use a, a more ancient form of the branch of martial arts that it comes from called Taekyeon. Uh, so I retorted with this. I said, I agree about the swords, but I'll probably use the Nippon Blade more because of the only Korean sword ne that he actually uses. And Huang had a lot of kicks in his moves, so I think that they both still will have kicks in their movesets. Just different variables. Huang does use Taekwondo, but Huang... But... Huarong does use Taekwondo, but Huang and Yun Song practiced Taekyeon. Taekwondo didn't exist in the 1500s. Because uh, it didn't. But anyway, thank you for the, the comment. I appreciate it. I really love the Korean Hangul lesson as it's good to understand the actual pronunciation and cultural differences of different nationalities. I personally think that Huang would use his Soul Calibur 3 Arcade Edition with modifications to new moves given him something unique. I also think that he would also get a redesign of his Soul Calibur 1 costume as different from what we saw in Mina's story as Season 2. Don't hyphenate Korean names, I already told you guys about that. It's just M-I-N-A, you don't have to, or M-I space N-A. Don't use a, a hyphen, please. Um, originally plans the designers can go crazy with it. I really hope his story shows what he did during Mina's story alongside fleshing out his personality. They did a pretty good job with Setsuka and Hilda. Um, yeah, I gotta reread the conversation because I got distracted by the hyphen. There is no hyphens, guys. I don't care what Japanese company puts a hyphen in their game. That's not how you spell their names. Um, I don't want to get mad about that, but it, people do it to my name all the time and it, it pisses me off. Let's see... I don't think he'll have Soul Calibur 3 as moveset because that's different assets from a different company. So, I mean, it's the same company. It's, well, it was Namco back then, and now it's Bandai Namco. And um, it was Project Soul, but it was a t completely different Project Soul team. Uh, I don't believe they even have the assets for the Soul Calibur 3 version. That's why they haven't done an HD remake for it. Plus, it's also partially owned by Sony, so I don't know if they would even allow it. That's why with 4, we had such a drastic difference, and they had to rebuild it from the ground up with a new engine and everything. Patriots112 says... Huang will have those cheap moves Assassin had in Soul Calibur 2, and that crane looking stance Yun Song had in Soul Calibur 2. I guess I just love Soul Calibur 2 and only remember moves from that game. Uh, they'll probably update it, but I don't think we're actually going to get Soul Calibur 2 moves because it's the battle system's totally, the engine's totally different that we're using now, so. You'd have to factor in like Reversal Edge and uh, Supers and their new combo strings, so I think that you will see some remnants of those, but it's going to be ultimately changed. Daniel Ramsey says. I'm really looking forward to seeing a lot more historically accurate or stylized clothings for Huang due to the fact that his dude is an interesting character. I love the fact that he could that he could be looked at as a Korean version of Mitsurugi, which he technically was in, in uh, Soul, uh, Soul Edge. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Uh, I'm going to show on screen my my revamped uh, reboot of the character that I created. It's not going to look like this in a game at all, but this is this would be an authentic, actual Korean time period uh, piece for the Joseon Dynasty that he would have been in. I really wish we did know more about what he was doing after Soul Calibur 1, since he and Lee Long 
only appeared briefly as created characters in Soul Calibur 3. Hell, some parts they used to make them aren't even the same as the ones you use in-game. We're definitely going to see it, because since this is a reboot, we're going to start their storylines over again. So I have no doubt that we are going to get like a new beginning and see the different interest after that. And we're going to finish off right now with a comment from Crimson Knight 20 who says, The Korean name lesson was at was the most interesting part. Uh, thank you for that. I thought it was going to be boring for you guys, so if you want to see more of that kind of stuff in the future, just let me know and I'll be happy to. Uh, as I would not be surprised if Yoon's weapons like Ramdo or Dragon Sword, which is originally Huang's, in his weapons options since the King Long is one of shang -Wa's weapons. Yeah, I'm still not sold on what they're going to do for weapons. Um, I, I have no idea. I can't really add to that. I can only guess and I don't really want to speculate on that. But, um, yeah, I agree. Anyway, I'm just happy he's coming back and thank you for the compliment about the lesson. Well, guys, that closes out this community video. Uh, for this week. Thank you for all your comments and as always if you want it, your comments to have a chance of showing up just comment on every video and I usually try to pick between five and six from each video to showcase. Um, with that being said we're going to bring this video to a close and as always guys thank you and thank you. Hey, what's up, guys? Have you always wanted some sweet Mark Yoon merch? Maybe a thick you shirt, maybe a shirt from Squirt, maybe my pretty face with my logo all over your body, or a throw pillow, or blanket, or anything? Well, you're in luck, because I just launched my merch store, and it is going to be available on Redbubble, and you will find a link to it in my description box down below. It's got a lot of quality content, and a lot of good stuff for you to pick up, so you can show your support for the channel, and just rep Mark Yoon.